And there it is in all its glory, everything that I'm bringing to Myanmar on this trip. And since I'm packing for my flight tomorrow morning, I thought I would make a video about it and show you everything that I'm bringing with me. This is going to be a three-stage process. First, I'm just going to go over all of the gear that you see on the bed and talk about what's in each pile. I think most of these items are pretty self-evident, but maybe there's one or two that will uh, be a bit of a surprise and I'll explain what I'm bringing and uh, why I uh, bring those things. In the next stage, I'm going to take each of these piles and put them into my individual carrying bags. So I have some other bags that these items fit into. I don't have them on display here. So I'm going to take all of this, put it into individual bags, and then show you what that looks like. And finally, I'll take all of that and put it into this uh, backpack you see there in the corner, an Osprey Farpoint Trek. It's a brand new backpack for me and I've never used it before, so it'll be a bit of a learning experience for me as well to figure out how all of this goes into that. Let's get started. So there it all is. I tried to group it into categories, of course, uh, going from left to right. This is the uh, camera gear for my Panasonic G85. It's not in the picture, of course, because that's what I'm filming with right now. Then I have my uh, sandals, of course. All of this is for the GoPro smartphone. I call this the uh, Doug Pile, kind of unique items that most people perhaps don't bring with them, and I'll explain what they are. I've got my cutlery, kind of a grab bag of tools and various items. This is all kind of a bedside table stuff that I uh, put beside my bed in a special little bag. Toiletries, of course, clothing, the stuff I use for sleeping, my documents and uh, ID and paperwork, and then way up here in the corner, all of my computer gear. So you can see that uh, the majority of it consists of uh, technology and that's a little bit of a struggle for me, especially with the GoPro because this is brand new and I recently bought some new accessories for it and I still don't know quite what I'm doing with all of it and all the adapters that you need for GoPro. So it's a little bit of a jumble there. Okay, let's start on the left here with uh, camera gear. As I said, I have the Panasonic G85, and this is the most important item that comes with it. This is the 12 to 60 millimeter kit lens that came with the camera. Um, I love this lens and I use it most of the time. Right now I'm shooting with a 12 millimeter Olympus lens, a wide angle lens, which is better for low light situations like this. So I bring only those two lenses, the 12 to 60, and then this uh, wide angle lens that I'm shooting with. I have the battery charger, of course, with the cable. I have three batteries for it in total, which uh, usually gets me through a, a day pretty easily. I have a circular polarizer for this lens and one for my 12 millimeter lens. And I have a neutral density filter. And you photographers out there, you know what that is for. But that's pretty much all I have with me in terms of uh, filters and accessories. And then, of course, a bunch of uh, SD cards for this camera. And this is my cleaning kit. You know, I've got your non-abrasive wipes, cleaning fluid, a little pen for cleaning the lenses, and a blower, you know, for removing dust. And I can use this for the GoPro and for my computer and smartphones. I can use these cleaning supplies for all of my electronics. So that's pretty much it for the uh, G85. Next to the G85 are my new sandals. I almost always wear sandals. My feet just aren't comfortable in shoes, so I don't bring shoes and socks normally. In terms of footwear, I have this, and that's all I have. 
For me, this is the most exciting category, the GoPro. I'm shooting with the GoPro Hero 7 Black that you see here. It came with the original GoPro frame. However, I've been using it with the microphone adapter, which you see here, so that I can plug in an external microphone. And in order to do that, I had to buy this Ulanzi cage for the GoPro, which has a slot for the microphone adapter, and it has a cold shoe mount on the top where you can uh, attach your uh, microphone. And speaking of microphone, this is my favorite piece of gear, the Rode Wireless Go. I use it all the time with the GoPro and with the Panasonic. So you have the uh, transmitter microphone plus the receiver. This connects the receiver to the camera and you have a couple of uh, wind muffs that you can attach to the microphone. One of them is a, a spare. I have four batteries for the GoPro and even that sometimes can't get me through a day. The GoPro burns through batteries very fast. One of the most important pieces of kit, I think, is this dual battery charger. You almost have to have this battery charger. It charges two at a time because the only other option is to charge the battery inside the GoPro itself. And while you're charging, then you can't use the camera and to charge four batteries inside the GoPro would take forever and it's way too much trouble. So this is quite an important piece of kit if you're going to use a GoPro. Okay, you need cables of course. This is the uh, charging cable for the battery and these two cables are used to charge the Rode Wireless Go. If I had to criticize the Rode Wireless Go you know, uh, one thing I would say is I think these cables are a bit much. You don't need such long cables, you know, to plug in these two items. So they seem like a little bit bigger than is necessary. Of course, you need uh, memory cards, as many uh, memory cards as you can afford and uh, get. So I've got memory cards for the GoPro. And I also, in, in addition to the Rode Wireless Go, I'm using a Boya BYM1 microphone with this long cord and I have a Saramonic lavalier microphone that I'm using right now. I find that the Boya is better for outside in uh, like loud noisy environments and the Saramonic is okay for uh, indoor like I'm doing now and it has a shorter cord so I prefer to use the Saramonic when I can. So I've got my GoPro with the GoPro cage and the Ulanzi cage, but then you need to mount that on something in order to hold the GoPro. And that's what all this is for. This is brand new. I just bought it a couple of days ago. The Jaws Flex Clamp. And you can use this, of course, to grip anything you like. So you're GoPro goes into that uh, quick release buckle mount on the top and then you can attach this to anything you like and I've found that it's actually quite handy as a selfie stick so I can actually use this to vlog with. Got a little, uh, you know, simple little hand grip here which is uh, very lightweight and I just throw it in my bag and I use it from time to time. And I have the GoPro 3-way grip now and this is also brand new and I'm still learning how to uh, use it. It's a very interesting device. A lot I could say about that but that uh, will be for a later video. And finally I have the uh, head strap for the uh, GoPro. So that's it for the GoPro setup. Two cages, four batteries, three microphones, three grips plus a headband and then to put all this together you often end up with a whole variety of adapters and mounting things and thumb screws. I bought these, they're, they're not GoPro thumb screws. The regular GoPro thumb screws are much narrower and smaller and I find that to tighten them up I have to use so much force, it really hurts my fingers, and then I can't really loosen them afterwards. 
So these ones with the wings on the side are much easier to uh, screw in and then loosen again afterwards. So I use these instead of uh, the ones that came with all my GoPro gear. Why GoPro does not make these themselves, I have no idea. Okay, GoPro, that's it. In terms of uh, smartphones, I bring two phones with me. One of them is one that I bring out onto the streets all the time. So that's the one I'm using as my camera for Google Maps, all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of, I think of it as kind of my burner phone that I use it everywhere I go all the time. And if it gets stolen or I lose it, it's not as big a deal because I have this one. And this is the one that I use for all of my, you know, banking, booking flights, anything important I do with the other phone. And that one always stays, you know, locked away in my hotel room and uh, things like that. It's not a perfect system, you know, having two phones, but I kind of like it. It's a bit silly in some ways, but it also helps even with battery power because, you know, when this phone dies, you know, the battery dies, so I can just switch over to the other phone and use that one. And you can use a power bank for that. I don't actually have a power bank in any of my uh, electronics. But at this point I was thinking, well, if I'm going to carry something as heavy as a power bank just to charge my phone, why don't I just have a whole separate phone with a fully charged battery? And then it kind of amounts to the same, uh, same thing. I have a grip for the phone, which can mount onto a, a tripod. And I use that for time lapses and things like that when I'm shooting with my phone. When I'm doing that, I have a Gorillapod, which I use with both the GoPro and my phones. And of course, everyone knows what GoPro, what Gorillapods are for. You know, you can use it as a tripod or you can wrap this around railings, tree branches, and anything like that. Very, very handy. I keep thinking it would be nice to combine these two, you know, to have something like this jaws clamp and then have an adapter at the bottom where you can screw in a set of legs like this. But uh, GoPro doesn't really work that way. So you end up with uh, different mounts for different purposes rather than one, you know, all in one mount. Just continuing from left to right with the next pile. This one's uh, pretty obvious. This is my clothing. I have kind of a hand towel. Actually, I keep this with me in my day pack all the time just for wiping off sweat and stuff like that. I get so sweaty when I'm walking around. My bathroom towel. I have a nice shirt with a collar. You know, I wear that if I'm going to the bank or to an embassy, things like that two t-shirts, one that I'm wearing plus this one, and then a tank top for relaxing in. And I have two pairs of pants. This one is kind of a thicker, warmer pair, and then a really thin, you know, outdoor hiking pair of pants there. And underwear hidden in there somewhere, of course. So that's pretty much clothing. Toiletries is pretty self-evident. Um, I love having a hairbrush for some reason. It just kind of scratches my uh, head. I really like that. So I bring a, a hairbrush, toothbrush, toothpaste, soap in a soap dish, shaving mirror, you know, razor, shampoo, and a little bottle there. For grooming, I bring my own, you know, nail clippers, tweezers, extra razor blades, a little uh, pocket knife, and this I use for scrubbing uh, toenails and fingernails, just to keep those clean. Something I've learned is actually uh, quite important to do. This item is kind of interesting. It's actually a bottle from Sea to Summit that comes in a, a set. And um, I like to use these because I can control the size of my shampoo bottle. Like if you just go to the drugstore, buy shampoo, you never know how big the bottle is going to be. It might not fit into your um, toiletries kit or something like that. So I'll buy the shampoo and then I'll pour it into here. 
and um, then I always know that this fits perfectly well. Moving on to the next grouping here, I have uh, eye shades for sleeping, a little headlamp flashlight, a bedside clock, which I find uh, quite handy, sewing kit, earplugs, I actually have a whole bunch of extra earplugs, band-aids, I just happen to have some of this cold and flu uh, medicine right now that I picked up recently and these are sort of emergency water purification tablets. I don't seem to use or need these very much anymore because you can get uh, filtered water so many places easily now. And I have this waterproof case for uh, smartphones, something like that. So if I go to the beach, um, I can put some money, keys, and a phone in there and seal it and uh, keep everything nice and dry. I came in uh, very handy when I was in Myanmar last time for the uh, water festival because uh, you got very wet and you had to protect your valuables. This category is kind of uh, miscellaneous and tools. So I have a nice sharp pair of scissors, a Swiss Army knife, actually it's a Victoria Knox knife, a rope which I use for drying laundry, hanging things up, a couple of uh, straps with uh, nice buckles so that I can uh, pack up luggage and do all kinds of different things. I've got a collapsible water bucket that I use for washing my own clothes and this soap is a biodegradable uh, laundry soap, goes along with that. And I mentioned that shampoo bottle I use that comes in a kit. Inside the kit you get some smaller ones as well. So I have sunscreen in this small bottle and mosquito repellent in this one. Which I don't use the mosquito repellent that often, but uh, when you do need it, you really, really need it. So I'm, I'm glad to carry at least a little bit with me. Also in this pile I have my sunglasses an extra pair of reading glasses, funky orange ones, in case I break or lose the ones I'm using now. And this is one of those high-tech collapsible duffel bags. So like it weighs, you know, just a few grams. And when you open it up, it's like 40 liters or something like that. So I use that if I go shopping. You know, you go to a store and buy a whole bunch of food or you want to leave some items in storage somewhere for a while, you know, you can you know pop this bag out of its case. And like I said, it's 40 liters. So you can go to the grocery store, stock up in all kinds of food, and then carry it all home, and you don't have to use plastic bags. This pile, what I call the Doug pile, might take a little bit of explaining. This item on the bottom is the MSR dromedary bag and it can contain, well it's listed as holding about 10 liters of water. I find in reality it holds 8 maximum, you know, but still that's a lot of water and it's still got some water in it right now as you can see. I find this really handy because so many countries now have water filtration machines out on the street and just for a few coins you know you can get 10 20 liters of water so I just go out to the machines you know put in a few coins fill this up bring it back to my room and I have water for days and days and days you know and it's also a handy way to purify water if you want to because you can have 8 liters of water in there and then purify all of it at once. I've been using one of these bags for a long time and I often wonder uh, why am I carrying this uh, heavy bag around? I mean it's lightweight but still you know when you add in all this gear you know stuff starts to add up and you start looking for things to leave behind and you wonder you know should I leave that behind? But every time I do I regret it. Um, I stay in a lot of budget guest houses for example and one of the habits I have, if I don't need drinking water, if I show up at the guest house, I'll immediately look to see if there is water in the bathroom, like coming out of the faucets. And if there is, I'll fill this up to the maximum and keep it in my room. Because quite often, even though water is running now, when you go to take your shower the next morning, there won't be any water. So, you know, you're stuck without your uh, shower. But since I thought ahead, I've got eight liters of water and this hose here is basically a shower hose. So I take my own water to the bathroom, hang this from whatever hook I can find 
and uh, take my shower. So it's kind of handy. Umbrella, pretty self-evident, you know, it adds weight to your bag, but it can really be useful, you know, especially in the rainy season. This is my emergency whistle that I carry with me. I have not yet had a reason to blow it in an emergency, but it's very lightweight. Um, this particular model is extremely loud. It's meant for emergencies and it also works in the water. So even if it's full of water, it will still make a very loud sound. So if you get uh, swept out to sea on the beach in the Philippines or Thailand, if you have this with you, you can blow it and perhaps uh, summon help. This is a recent purchase of mine. Um, I had an old plastic mechanical scale that barely worked and only went up to about 10 pounds. And this one goes up to 40 kilograms or 88 pounds. Press of a button, you know, hang your bag and you can weigh your backpack, weigh your day pack and make sure it suits the airline limits. And me being me, I always seem to want to measure things. So I have my own little measuring tape. It's good for measuring your luggage, you're shipping a box home from another country and the, you know, the post office has limits on how much they charge for certain dimensions. So you can measure boxes. Maybe you're shopping for something and you want to know whether it's going to fit in another compartment. So you can bring your, you know, measuring tape to the store, measure items, see whether it's all going to fit together. Anyway, not too many people travel with a measuring tape, I wouldn't imagine, but I use it all the time. It's amazing how often I use that thing. Also in the Doug category, I often travel with my own light bulb. I don't need to here because I have a big window in this room and the light bulb here is pretty high quality. But a lot of budget guest houses use the cheapest, dimmest, darkest light bulbs they can stick in. And it's already a little bit depressing sometimes being in one of these budget guest houses and a dark, dark room kind of adds to that. So I love to, you know, screw in my own 100 watt, 120 watt light bulb and just blast that room with bright light, you know, make it cheerful, you know, make it uh, more livable. So I often have my own uh, light bulb. Next category is up here in the corner and it's pretty self-evident as well. It's also a bit of a Doug category. Things that I like to bring or need to bring that a lot of people wouldn't bother with. This, for example, is my mosquito net and I really cannot live without it, even in hotels that are sealed and for everyone will tell me there are no mosquitoes ever in their room. Somehow they find their way into mine and even one mosquito buzzing in my ear will keep me awake all night and I'm incredibly sensitive to their bites. So when they bite me just in one place, like on my leg, my whole leg will feel like it's on fire and be itchy. So one mosquito can ruin an entire night, which ruins the entire next day. So yeah, I take the time to bring a mosquito net and I set it up every night, even when I'm in a sealed hotel room. I mean, sometimes I don't, I'll take a chance, um, but if I, if there's a convenient place to hang it, I will usually uh, put it up. Here in this guest room, for example, you know, I could put a hook up here in the corner, and then there's another one hanging from here because it has a, uh, you know, tiles on the roof, so you can actually get in between the tiles and put in a hook. And then I hung another one from this electrical cord here. Sometimes you get rooms that are nothing but cement all around and then you're, you're, you really cannot screw anything into the cement or attach anything. So then you can't put up your mosquito net very easily. So I've certainly had some epic struggles trying to find ways to attach the ropes for this mosquito net, but I'm always glad that I do. Over here is a cotton sleeping sheet that I made myself. And I also have a little blow up pillow with a little pillowcase that I made for it. And again, this adds weight to my bag, but I find it extremely comfortable. An odd thing in Asia is that even when the guest house puts a sheet on the bed, like this guest house has this fitted sheet on the mattress, you generally won't get a top sheet. 
they just aren't supplied. And I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I mean, is it the habit of everyone in Asia that everyone just lies on the mattress and never uses a top sheet? Um, sometimes, of course, it's too hot to even have a single top sheet. But um, at night, cools down, you got a fan blowing, wind coming in from the window. It could be cool enough, and I love to have my own sheet that I can pull over the top of my body, and I sleep so much better. And the pillow can be very handy as well because you never quite know if you're even going to get a pillow or the quality of the pillow. And I can use this one on trains and buses and things like that. And then these are my bathroom slippers as well that I bring um, going in and out of the bathrooms. I've learned over the years that, um, yeah, places that have shared bathrooms can often be a hotbed for foot fungus and things like that. And uh, sometimes you don't want to know what's on the floor. So just going in and out of the shared bathrooms with these uh, bathroom flip-flops is uh, kind of nice. So I always bring my own uh, bathroom, bathroom flip-flops. This category is all of my ID and documents. And uh, it, this one might require a little bit of explanation because I have four separate pouches for all of my ID and documents. And the reason I do that is to have a certain amount of redundancy. So for example, my passport uh, is in this bag, which I call pouch number one. So I've got my passport in there. But in another pouch, passport num in pouch number four, I have all of my Canadian ID, which I would need to get a new passport. I don't keep them in the same place. My problem that is that I don't have a home base. Like I'm pretty much on the road permanently. So I can't keep things like my Canadian ID at home in a safe place. I have to bring everything with me. And the idea is that if I lose my passport or someone steals it, I can then go to the Canadian Embassy and easily get a replacement passport because I have my Canadian birth certificate, you know, health insurance card, driver's license, all of my Canadian ID, I have it with me. So that makes it easier to uh, get a new passport. And if I kept all of that in the same bag, of course, someone steals that bag, I lose my passport and I lose all my other ID and then I'm having a lot more trouble getting a new passport. Same thing for money. This one is a money belt, obviously, which you can wear under your clothes. And I keep my ATM card in here. Don't tell anyone. But then I also keep a credit card in pouch number three. And I keep those in separate places. Um, this system kind of developed when I was cycling because I would have four pannier bags plus a handlebar bag. So I could spread these pouches out and put one pouch in each bag and it kind of minimized the risk instead of having it all together in one bag that someone could steal and I lose everything. I have all of my important documents kind of spread out. It's not a perfect system, but my plan is, like I said, to have a bit of redundancy. Someone steals that bag with my passport. I still have ID so I can get a new passport. Someone steals this bag with my ATM card. Well, I still have this bag, which has my credit card. Um, also in, this, in these bags, I have traveler's checks and I have cash. So I would have traveler's checks here, here, and here but I have the receipt and the numbers for my traveler's checks in pouch number four. So if I lose even all three of those pouches and all of my traveler's checks are gone, I still have the receipt which I can use to go to the you know, American Express and have all of my traveler's checks replaced. Same thing for cash. I carry emergency cash in each of the pouches, different amounts in each one. And that, you know, that way if, you know, two bags get stolen, I still have enough cash, you know, to get me to the nearest big city where I can somehow get money and get my life uh, organized again. So that's my system for that. Pouch one, pouch two, pouch three, pouch four. 
with all of my part important documents and money and ID kind of spread out around them in what I think is a strategic way to have redundancies and backups for all these different items which are so important today. And here I have a little uh, clear plastic pouch. You can see my boarding pass for my flight tomorrow to Myanmar. And I carry a little bit of stationary items, you know, a pen of course. But I also have scotch tape and whiteout and a sharpie. You know, I use these if I go to the airport, I mean to the post office and I need to ship a box somewhere. Or you go to apply for a um, new visa for a new country and you have to attach your photo to the form. You got some tape to do that. You make a mistake on the form, you know, you can white it out. And like a, this kind of thing is not, you know, absolutely necessary. If you go somewhere and you need to attach a photo, they might have glue around, but you know, it's crowded. You're wandering around, you know, going up to counters. Do you have glue? Can I borrow some glue? Is there any glue? You know, I just like to have things like that with me, at least a minimum amount. Just makes life a, a little bit easier that way. Also, by the way, inside these pouches, I have photocopies of my passport, of course. And whenever I get a new visa for a new country, I take a photocopy of it, stick it in one of these pouches. I have photos like passport and ID photos in each of them so that I have a selection when I need to apply for a visa. They sometimes need different sizes. So I have a variety of sizes scattered amongst those uh, four bags. I try to be organized, you know, whether it works or not in the end. Yeah, who knows? This category should be pretty self-evident as well. I've got my baby Dell laptop barely working, but still hanging in there. So I've got the adapter for the laptop and a power strip, which uh, I suppose could go into the Doug category as well. Not many people would carry their own power strip, but this one is extremely lightweight. There's nothing in there at all. It's like an empty plastic box and it has the American style plugs in it, which uh, a lot of my gear is from Canada and the US, so I like having the uh, American style. But the most important thing about this is that it has like a 10 foot, 12 foot extension cord on it. And in a budget guest house, that's very useful because most of the time there's only one electrical outlet in the room and it will be over by the door and yet the bed will be on the far side of the room. So if you sit on the bed and you want to charge your phone, um, char plug in your computer, do anything with your electronics, you're really kind of stuck because you're 15 feet away from the one electrical outlet. And I've seen in so many rooms, people will have to plug in their phone to charge it. And then they have to find some way of bal balancing their phone on top of the outlet or piling up chairs and items so that they can raise their phone up to the level of the outlet. All kinds of uh, ridiculous things. And this power strip, yeah, I plug it in, stretch it over to wherever I need in the room, plug in all my items and I'm ready to go. At the moment, I'm only bringing one portable hard drive. It's like a two, two terabyte hard drive. Yeah, um, I, f I will probably end up needing more memory than that, but I figure if I do need another hard drive, I can just buy one while I'm in Myanmar. It's the plan anyway. Earphones for my computer, international travel adapter from Scross, which has two USB charging ports built into it. And it's universal, so you should be able to use it in, in almost any country in the world. You know, you have a plug for every country and then an outlet here. Every plug will fit into there pretty much. And it has a, a fuse built into it, which is supposed to protect your devices. I don't really know how useful that is, but there is a fuse in there. Down below, I have extra fuses for the adapter. And then I have the mouse. And of course, a whole range of flash drives, which people tend to collect over the years. Um, 
It's quite a big collection, but most of them have kind of a purpose. These three contain my entire music library, which I love to have with me from time to time, you know, to listen to some music. And uh, this one is one of these security, um, it's a Kingston security data traveler. So it's very hardcore, waterproof, shockproof, and you need a special code in order to access the contents. You need a password. So I keep all of my sensitive information on there. If I lose it, nobody can get into it. This one is my password manager key. I use a password manager now to keep track of all my passwords and security and stuff like that. Um, and in order to access it, you have to plug this into the computer and run a program which provides you with a code which gets you into your password manager, which then allows you to go into your email and other things. So it's kind of a physical device that um, for a thief to get into anything of mine, um, they would need first to get into my password manager program and they can't do it without this physical item. And then I just have a couple of uh, regular uh, flash drives, 32 gigabyte, you know, for storing things, transferring from computer to computer. And I have a couple of keys that I use, like keys to go with these padlocks, which lock onto these zippers on uh, backpacks and things like that, just for a little bit more uh, security. So that's it, laptop and adapters and a mouse. One more small category to talk about, this is uh, cutlery. Normally, this would be much larger because for Myanmar, I'm not bringing a stove. I'm not bringing any pots and pans. I don't plan on doing any cooking or anything like that. But I still like to have a, a cup of coffee in my room. So I bring my own mug and then I have my own cutlery for uh, in case I do make noodles or stuff like that. And this is kind of a, a soup spoon, but it's way too big for my mouth. and. Um, I'd like to have this little spoon here. It's the perfect size for mixing coffee. You know, in terms of scooping up some instant coffee, this is way too big. So yeah, fork, knife, spoon, coffee spoon, pair of scissors. I use this for cutting open food bags of any kind. So it doesn't matter if these scissors get really wet and sticky and gunky. You know, that's what I use them for. I have another pair of scissors here in my toolkit, and I use that for paper. You know, so these are always kept uh, sharp and dry and clean to use with paper or clipping hair, anything like that. So paper scissors and gunky food scissors. And I would often have a kettle with me for boiling water, but my lovely kettle burst into pieces a few days ago, so it doesn't uh, work anymore. And I haven't been able to uh, find a replacement yet. So I'm going to Myanmar without a kettle for my morning coffee. Okay, that's it for the overview of the gear that I have here. And now I'm going to take each of the categories and pack them down into the individual bags that I use for each grouping. Um, I'm not going to go over every single bag that I use, but I'll show you a couple of them right now just to give you an idea of uh, what it is I'm going to do. This, for example, is a packing cube from Sea to Summit. I've recently fallen in love with uh, packing cubes, and this is the one that I use for all of my clothing. So my clothing all goes into that uh, packing cube. I have this clear plastic waterproof, well, water resistant anyway, bag, and I use this for all of my flash drives, memory cards, and all that kind of stuff. So that all goes with that gear over there. And this is a little pouch from Duder. I have a few of these actually, uh, different colors, and this is the one that I use for all of my kind of bedside tools. So it goes along with uh, this group here. You know, I put it beside my pillow so I have instant access to my flashlight, you know, earplugs, um, eye shade, all those sorts of things. My alarm clock, you know, for waking up in the morning and seeing the time. 
So that blue bag fits uh, all of that stuff there. And of course I have a toiletries bag which is right here. I love the ones that have a uh, hook so that I can hang it up in the uh, bathroom and have access to all of my toiletries. And I've modified this one quite a bit. I've added all this Velcro and all these loops at the top so that all of my uh, toiletries here, you know, fit into that and hang nicely. You know, for example, even my uh, brush, I put uh, Velcro on the back. I just stick it there and uh, stays in place. As I always have, uh, and it stays out of the soap and the shampoo. You know, I can just take it off, brush my hair, get a good head scratch going, and then put it back on the uh, Velcro. And this Velcro here, of course, down at the bottom is for the uh, shaving mirror. And then I put my, uh, you know, toothbrush in here, toothpaste in here, shampoo in there, soap in there, shaver in there, and you're pretty much done. So that's uh, how it looks when I go to the, uh, the bathroom. And this is another one of those Duder bags, similar to the, you know, the blue one that I use for my bedside uh, kit. This one is for all of my uh, cutlery, and I put extra, you know, Ziploc bags in there for instant coffee, you know, a lighter for when I uh, have a cooking stove and I need to light it, and all of my spoons and forks and knives and cooking gear, you know, goes in there. I actually have a lot of bags that date back decades, and this is one of them. It's probably uh, it's 20 years old now, and originally it was the I think MSR, oh no, it was from Outdoor Research. This is their outdoor kitchen. So this contained, you know, a big cutlery set, but I found it was too big for the amount of cutlery I have. So I have repurposed it to carry a variety of electronics. You know, I put my, I put my uh, external hard drive in there, along with a whole bunch of other cables and cords and adapters all go in there. This is one of the important bags. This is a low pro gear up box, medium size. And this is where I'm currently storing all of my GoPro stuff or as much of it that I can fit in as possible. The idea is to put into this bag everything I need when I'm out walking around the streets. So that's my walking around bag. Some of the bigger mounts that I may not be using that day that I will put in a different bag if I'm not using it and I can leave it in the hotel room. But this bag now goes with me in my uh, day pack. And I have a variety of uh, stuff sacks. This is the one for my Life Systems box net mosquito net. So it uh, goes over there with my mosquito net. It all packs down into there, you know, along with all the ropes and, and hooks and things like that. I mentioned that I repurpose a lot of bags, like this one was meant for kitchenware, but it was too big for kitchenware, so I use it for something else. These days I find that outdoor gear companies have gone a bit crazy with making their bags smaller and smaller, so I end up doing a weird game of switcheroo. Like this, for example, as much as I like this Sea to Summit traveling light duffel bag, it comes in this tiny little pouch and when you see it on the shelf it looks amazing it's like wow it's so small so compact but when you take it out of this bag it takes you like 25 minutes to stuff it back in it's way too small so what i often end up doing is buying one item and then i will actually take it out of its bag and put it into the bag of another item you know that's slightly larger and then use this bag for something that's slightly smaller, you know, and each bag kind of moves up in the chain to fit, you know, bigger and bigger items because the bags that things come in are often way too small. Once you take it out of the bag, you're never getting it back in there again. I did it this time just because I knew I would be showing it here, but normally I wouldn't even put it back in that uh, case. It's just way too much trouble. Another one of these Duder bags, kind of a utility bag, and this one I use for all of my filters 
and things like that for my uh, Panasonic. So that all goes into there. Well, stage two is complete. I've gone through every category here and put it inside the bag that I usually use and it's uh, at least looking a little bit neater now which is a good thing. I'll uh, show you what I've got. Okay, stage two is complete. I've taken all of my gear and put it into its individual case or bag and I'll show you what I've got here. This is my Panasonic G85 case. The uh, camera is not in the bag right now, of course, because I'm filming with it, but this is the bag that I keep it in. Lens case for the 12 to 60 millimeter zoom lens. Batteries for the Panasonic. And this case has all of the filters, memory cards, lens caps, and all that kind of thing. All of the cleaning equipment that I have for the uh, camera gear is tucked inside here along with the uh, camera at the, in the top area. This is all of the uh, GoPro equipment. Most of the important stuff goes here inside this uh, case. I've got the uh, Ulanzi cage here, battery charger, Rode Wireless Go, batteries, all of the memory cards, flash drives, that kind of thing, microphone, and here is the original uh, GoPro frame that the uh, camera comes with. And then in the other pockets, I have the various uh, USB charging cables and that sort of thing. It all fits pretty neatly in there. I'm very impressed with this uh, little bag with its little orange handle on the front. This bag contains all of the random adapters and thumb screws as well as the uh, headband. And this contains the mounts. So I've got my three GoPro three-way in here, the JAWS flex clamp, and the uh, Gorilla Pod, all three of them are in here. This is an old bag that I cut off one of my old pannier bags. As you can see, um, part of it was exposed to the sun and uh, got quite worn out from the sun. I don't use these pannier bags anymore, but before I got rid of them, I cut off some of the bags that were still in good shape and I use them to carry gear depending on what I need. And this is quite simple. I have my two smartphones here in this case with the USB charging cable. This is the bag that I use for my uh, MSR dromedary water bag. It uh, fits in there. Not too bad, not too heavy. It's empty now because I filled up all my water bottles. Over here is the Sea to Summit packing cube. So this has all of my clothing, sleeping sheet, pillow, pillowcase, and bath towel is all inside here in a nice neat little package. I'm really a big fan of these, pack these cubes now. These ones I like because it has the mesh on the top which allows airflow and the uh, zipper is really quite nice. You know, zips all the way around the edges and then the whole thing opens up. And the dimensions are exactly the same size as most airline uh, carry-on bags. So if you are the type of person that carries only a carry-on bag, you know, these packing cubes might be uh, the thing for you. You can get different sizes. So this is the like medium size, and then you can get the size smaller, which is exactly half as big. So you can have two of the small ones, which fit exactly on top. So they're designed so that each layer stays in exactly the same uh, dimensions. Very cool. And here are some other cases. This is my uh, mosquito net. Packs down quite nicely into its own bag. My uh, toiletries kit, you know, soap, shampoo, toothbrush, shaver, all that kind of stuff. This is my uh, bedside bag with, you know, earplugs, eye shade, uh, grooming tools, flashlight, little uh, alarm clock battery in there. I mean, a, yeah, a little alarm clock that's run on a battery. So I put this beside my pillow at night, has everything I need when I'm just lying in bed. And this is a, a granite gear, very thin, but very strong, um, waterproof, you know, lightweight bag. And that's where I put all of my uh, odds and ends. So there you'll find my laundry kit, you know, sunglasses, all those little things you saw spread around are all packed away into that bag there. 
finally there is the laptop and this is always a, a bit of a struggle because everything here is so heavy you know it's a very basic laptop but uh, you know once you put it inside its padded case it's quite heavy this is all of the uh, charging adapters cables uh, things like that and that power cord that I use um, external hard drives in here along with the uh, charger for my Panasonic batteries and this waterproof case contains all of my uh, flash drives um, and things like that memory cards anything to do with the uh, computer and memory and that is about it um, the only yeah, there's really nothing missing from there all the small items as I said are packed away into that orange granite gear bag GoPro Panasonic clothes computer stuff so now all of this is going to go into my backpack before I move on to stage three which is putting all of this inside the uh, backpacks just a little bit of um, backpack theory it while I'm going through this process it strikes me that things have become reversed over time in the old days you would have a you know, big backpack and a very small day pack for your carry-on and the backpack would hold all of your big heavy bulky items your sleeping bag and sleeping sheet and mosquito net and um, tent perhaps sleeping pad food and um, clothing toiletries all that kind of stuff that you could afford to lose you know you wouldn't want to lose it but uh, if you did lose that whole bag it wouldn't be a disaster and that bag would usually be big and bulky and heavy and you check it in at the airport and then you have your small bag which would be your carry-on and it wouldn't contain very much in the old days it would have your passport some paper maps a pen a notebook maybe a camera some film extra batteries and that's about it so the checked bag was big your carry-on was small all the valuable things in the old days were actually quite small so that you know that balance was a pretty good one but things have switched in the uh, modern era because it strikes me that almost everything on the bed here is something electronic and very valuable and I'd like to put it all in my carry-on to be honest um, I've got my computer laptop very important that goes into my carry-on GoPro all the GoPro gear I'd like to bring that with me in my carry-on and then I've got my uh, Panasonic I'd like that also to go into my uh, carry-on along with all the flash drives everything is of high value item and, and very important to me smartphones as well of course and once I take all of that out of the mix put it all into a carry-on bag there at this point there isn't much left to go into my big bag and that's because on this trip I'm not doing any camping so you know I'm not bringing a tent or a sleeping bag or any food and, and cooking appliances that's what would normally go in my backpack which is why I bought a large 75 liter version but for this trip you know I don't really need it I don't think we'll find out when I get down to uh, packing it um, I might end up with a lot of extra room I might end up with so much room in fact that I might be able to put all of my clothing in the bottom half of the backpack and then even take my day pack this uh, burgundy osprey knapsack over there that might even be able to fit inside my big pack backpack in the top compartment we'll see if that works out so I'm going to go have lunch now because I'm very hungry and then I'm going to come back and uh, get on with stage three putting all this into the backpack and when I do that I'm going to show some of the features of this uh, Osprey Farpoint Trek and uh, that uh, hopefully that'll be interesting <laughs> 